Hello, YouTube. Welcome to a new episode of Scourge of War. For starters, we're going to be playing the Fox's Gap South Mountain campaign. And so the plan is that we're going to go through all of these South Mountain battles, through the Battle of Antietam, and then finally with Gettysburg, and then maybe some extra content here and there. So we're going to be playing the Confederates. Uh, under Garland Jr.'s Brigade of Confederates, and we are going to defend Fox's Gap at all costs. And that's basically the gist of this little fight right here. We have to defend and we gain victory if we can keep the Union away from the objective. So I thought this would be a nice little turnaround other than Grand Tactician. Uh, by the time you see this video, I will have also released a first look at Field of Glory 2 Medieval, so please check that out. But without further ado, let's just jump in and start playing this little scenario. Alright, so here we are. Looking at the map right here, I have skipped ahead to when the first shots have finally opened under my own artillery. The Ohioans under the Kanawha Division. I hope I'm saying that right, led by General Jacob D. Cox, has arrived onto the field. At least, I'm not sure which brigade that is to the right there. I'm assuming it's one of the brigades under the Kanawha Division. So now it's just a matter of defending, waiting for the Union to come close. I have the 5th Virginia Cavalry on my right flank. They're going to try and delay that Union advance. We are also supposed to get two infantry regiments from Longstreet's Corps or some sort of division. I forget which, where they're from, but they come in and for some reason I cannot control them in the battle, so they're useless. But here you can see we are now skirmishing, engaging with the regiments here, the 30th Ohio. Yeah, so they're definitely Ohioans. And the objective is all the way to the left behind where the camera is now. Now, to those who have been watching Grand Tactician, since that's the only series I have been posting so far, <laughs> uh, you'll see that Scourge of War is more of a regiment-based tactical game. Grand Tactician is a whole country-sized, army-sized strategy, grand strategy, and tactics, thus giving it the name Grand Tactician. So this is much more up close and personal. You have the regiments, who they're led by, uh, their, their stats, how seasoned they were, and the casualties and scores and all that. So what is usually a brigade and Grand Tactician, these are regiments. So I pull back the 5th Virginia Cavalry. They can't withstand the firepower of two infantry regiments. Uh, if I keep, if I call them brigades throughout this video, I apologize. I'm just, I'm still in Grand Tactician mode, so bear with me. <laughs> but this is the first engagement, one of the first engagements of South Mountain, September 14th, 1862. Lee had divided his army into sections with Longstreet's Corps heading over to this area, South Mountain area, and Jackson's Corps sieging the towns around Harper's Ferry. And eventually, unfortunately, his plan would be found out by McClellan due to a special order of Lee's campaign plans that was wrapped around a cigar. So that issue causes Lee, he has to react much sooner than he anticipated against McClellan's army, and three days later, they would clash at the famous, yet infamous, Battle of Antietam. So this scenario, Garland's brigade, Garland himself would be morally wounded and die from his wounds received here at Fox's Gap, along with General Reno, Reno of the Union side, and supposedly he was also killed morally slash morally wounded almost near the same spot as Garland was prior in this battle. And 
Ah, uh, yeah, Special Order 191. I knew it was 19 something, but that's the special order that McClellan found. I just, I had to look it up real quick. I couldn't remember the specific number. But right now, this is, I believe, part, this is part of D.H. Hill's division of 5,000, about 5,000 troops. Obviously, this is Garland's brigade. And the other brigade is, or the other, yeah, the other brigade uh, is, pro is over at Turner's Gap defending against those Union forces. So we'll probably play that scenario soon after this one, just to follow the historical timeline. So there they go, they're retreating again. They couldn't withstand the firepower. And the Union is slowly coming up. And the 20th North Carolina will soon respond. They have about 246 men. So you can see these regiments were extremely small by this time. And I know there's talk that the ideal regiment size was a thousand men, 10 companies each. And so usually three regiments would make up 3,000 to 4,000 troops in a brigade. So that Union Regiment comes up really close. I believe it's the 13th North Carolina. I, I clicked on one of those two. Uh, yeah, that's the 20th right in front of them. So they're engaged now. They're seasoned, so they're pretty pretty good elites. And then the 12th North Carolina towards the middle there. The 5th North Carolina, where I had a third cousin serve all through the war. So kudos to him for his services in the 5th North Carolina. And the cavalry is trying to take a break. They're still engaged, but they're they're trying to slowly withdraw back a bit into the tree line. Historically, the Union did succeed and overturned the Confederates at the Stone Wall along this road here. But by the time that they overran the Confederates, delays were... Uh, courier messages were delayed. That's what I was going to say and it halted the Union assault and that incident occurs many times throughout the war where it seems like the Union gains a foothold but then they struggle struggle to maintain order and cohesion and are trying to get the rest of their allies up on the line with them uh, a pure example of this was also the Confederates at Gettysburg on the first day they completely routed the Union Army all the way back to Cemetery Hill, but they stopped pursuing them because no one could establish further orders or cooperate with each other. So here we can see more Union regiments are starting to come up in the center. There's my artillery, one of the artillery pieces firing down, but their attack is relatively slow. They are attacking this right flank here, but that's about it. And they aren't doing it in force. So I speed up a little bit, and now they're starting to move forward. And here, they are going to engage with my Confederate regiments there. But the 20th North Carolina is still engaged over here. Yeah, so there they are. They retreated a little bit, so that's why they're in the woods there. Artillery on my side is just shelling them to pieces, which is totally fine with me. <laughs> but yeah, this game has been out for a long time. You can start you can see the casualties piling up now. I always liked the casualty sprites in this game because if you're in an intense battle with a whole army going at another army, the casualties are astounding everywhere. Just bodies everywhere. It's really, really a surreal experience. So here comes these reinforcements, the North, fourth North Carolina, and another one. Which one is that? Second North Carolina. But I cannot control them for some reason. It says they're under Garland's brigade, but they do not have the little gold eagle above their flag, which signifies that I am in control of them. And I tried to attach them to my command and stuff, and it was unsuccessful. So, there are paperweights in this battle, and I have to rely on the 23rd North Carolina on this side, and my artillery, to engage the Yankee regiments. So, the 13th there, with 183 men, 12th North Carolina, of 86 men. So, they are completely understaffed. 
<laughs> you know, for this type of it fight, especially with that huge Union regiment coming up right in front of them. But we are successful in holding this road. A lot more than what I had expected, to be honest. So you can see the Union is starting to waver there a little bit. Uh, in the wrong direction for some reason, but they are wavering on that side. And they're coming extremely close to my regiments right here. But well, you were to attack and take the Union K position at all costs. Oh, that was intercepted by one of the commanders. So this is the 28th Ohio, and here comes another regiment ready to fight and support their withdrawing regiment. 5th North Carolina, 146 men. And there's Garland himself, and he does survive this fight. He does not die his, like in his historical counterpart. So he stays behind the line and just gives support to the troops at the road and stone walls. There's another intercepted message. So now I'm going to try and send a courier message to the two infantry regiments on the left flank. You know, saying, hey, attack, attack. I'm, trying, I'm just trying to get their attention. I don't know what the issue was. Or, you know, if it's a bug or something that was never discovered. But I could not control them. Because they would have been really crucial in the flank here. But alas, it did not work. <laughs> So, most of this fight, it's just a slugfest, just shooting at each other. The cavalry here is gaining back their morale a little bit. They're wavering and they're winded, but I'm going to send them back in to support. And here we have the 13th North Carolina going at it. And luckily, if it wasn't for the 12th North Carolina in the flank, I think I would have lost the firefight right there. So that flanking fire, just like Grand Tactician, it proves very effective in these types of battles. But yeah, if you've never played this game, I highly recommend it. Uh, one of the things is that it, one of the issues is that it is poorly optimized. So as you're looking at it, you're saying, "Hey, why is it not full screen all across the board?" Well, because it does not have the proper optimization for 1920 by 1080 resolution, and even more worse if it was 4K. <laughs> so this is the best that I could do. To maintain visibility and keep it running smoothly without it glitching out and uh, crashing and all that stuff. So there goes a Union regiment. They with retreated. They're pulling back into that swampy area or that tree line. Not sure what that is. So again, that artillery on the left flank really helps and to maintain my side and my flank. 23rd North Carolina, I'm moving them up to engage that huge Union regiment there. But they do technically overrun the wall right here. I guess that's historically accurate, but it's not the entire length of the road, I don't think. Not sure what stone wall that they are talking about uh, when they discuss the, the fight at Fox's Gap. Or either that or this map is not made 100% accurate and there's, there's chunks of stone wall missing along the road. Who knows? So, we're about 1,600 score right now, 336 casualties, and I didn't see how many we killed, but it's about even, I think, 300 against 300. So, pretty even fight, despite the size of regiments against each other. My regiments are a little bit smaller than these Union regiments, but that does not stop them from giving up one hell of a fight. So yeah, this is this is what most of some of you have said you would like to see. So I'm definitely going to go through and record uh, these scenarios and stuff. The only issue is that since it's poorly optimized, it does not pick up my voice on the microphone in the middle of recording. So I have to narrate it like I am now, just like I did with that the previous Grand Tactician battle videos because I failed to check my mic. But this is a case where I don't have the choice of using a mic while recording, so it may take a little bit longer to narrate and upload these videos because I, I find narrating to be a little bit more tedious than if I were just talking in the middle of gameplay. 
because my thoughts are genuine while in the middle of playing. Here, I'm just observing and trying to make conversation, so to speak. So, here comes the 5th North Carolina. They're coming back. Uh, 105 casualties. They're not doing too well, but gotta just keep them up at the front trying to keep this objective safe. So right here I decided to pull back into the tree line just to see if that would be more effective because I didn't want to lose all my troops along the road and not undercover per se. So I'll turn them around there. Don't want them to have their backs facing the enemy. So the Union withdraw at this point and they're kind of just taking a breeder. I assume it's a AI breeder. Uh, they do have some artillery opening fire, but they don't have a lot, so it's very ineffective. Sure, it does some damage, but not enough. So here they come. They're coming up again towards the road, kind of hitting my right flank a little bit. But that does not really deter my troops. I think the 5th North Carolina in this fight, they completely route from the field just because of how low their numbers were to begin with. So there we are, we have killed 420, about 19 now. So that's pretty good, and again, these regiments are still sitting here. Do you see, they would have been so crucial because this Union Regiment right here is completely exposing themselves. And I tried so hard to get these guys to move. What do I have to do to convince them? Do I need to give them money or chocolates or something? Maybe a kiss on the cheek and say it's gonna be all right? <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, hopefully that issue doesn't happen in the other scenarios. They retreat anyway. They can't stand the artillery and musket fire, so that's a plus. And this fighting over here has stalled a little bit, but the center, they're trying to fight, but you can see that they're withdrawing again. Especially that one that's firing right now. You can see they're kind of spaced out, kind of scattered. That means they're in the middle of withdrawing from a fight. But, yeah, Ugh, that, that left flank of mine irritates me to no end. <laughs> so there goes the 5th North Carolina. They completely lost the fight. 78 men left. They really, they gave it their all and they still failed. But what can you do? Pat them on the back, kiss them on the cheek, and tell them it'll be okay. <laughs> So yeah, there we are. We're at 2300 score now because we're still defending the objective. And that's all we really have to do. As long as we have that objective, we're going to win the fight. Because that's all that is required of me. So here I am. I'm still clicking on them. I'm trying. I'm really trying here. And I know sometimes if you click on this map here, you can kind of click and give orders that way. But it doesn't work. So, they're just, they're like the civilians at the first battle of Manassas, just sitting on the hillside, picnicking and enjoying the battle as it unfolds before it becomes chaos and they run away all the way back to Washington or wherever the hell they came from. <laughs> so here, everyone's just taking a breeder on that side, waiting to see who's going to commit first, but... It's the center right now that's attacking, and we're doing pretty well. We're just going to keep repulsing their attacks. They're they're really piecemeal in this scenario for some reason. Yeah, so there's the captains of the artillery there. That's the other thing about this game is that I'm always impressed by the fact that they have the names and the pictures of the commanders of every artillery battalion, every regiment, you know, the research that they did on this game and to add all the officers and files and stuff is remarkable. Especially for a game that came out quite a couple years ago. What was it? I think... Was it 2005? Maybe 2009? I'm somewhere in the 2000s, I believe, this game came out. I'm, I'd, I'd have to look again. But these Ohioans of the... Uh, was it Ken Kenova? Kenesha, Kenawa, I think I was saying earlier. <laughs> it completely slipped my mind. But they're not doing good. They're they are really lacking in aggressiveness. And that aggressiveness I believe would overturn this battle because I don't I really don't have that 
good support and number of troops and the regiments. So yeah, I'm going to try and upload Scourge of War. I'm going to continue the Field of Glory 2 stuff and play the campaigns and really just get into it and have fun with it. Uh, and just keep trying to find new games to play. I may do some Verdun video, you know, gameplay. Maybe some... Uh, I'm kind of hesitant on Ultimate General Civil War because I think that's been milked enough in the YouTube community. Uh, maybe I'll do some of the Ultimate General Gettysburgs, and that's kind of like this, where you just kind of play the scenarios and have fun with it. But Ultimate General Civil War, I think it's been overused and it's overdone by now. And I'm not really that much of a fan of the scaling in that game, where every single battle you can completely decimate the enemy, and it'll come back with about even or even more numbers than you do and I find that to be really it's just a cheap way of playing the battles it's not a true campaign setting like Grand Tactician where all the facts come into check with weather supply terrain uh, who's the commander are they feuding you know etc etc so Grand Tactician, it's just, once it's released and really optimized stuff, it's going to blow everything out of the water. And to those who complain and are making trouble on the forums, you know, demanding, oh, it's been five months, it should be done by now. I, what game at that scale has ever been completed in five months? I've never heard of such a game like that. And the devs are completely active and are totally listening to the community. But I guess you just can't please everybody. So, my support, my hopes, and my confidence that the devs will continue and create that game to its utmost maximum uh, perfection, you know, I give it to them 100%. But back to this game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, it's really stalled. One, one regiment is engaging my confederates, and that's it. So... Not much else to report. I'll just, I'll probably just skip ahead until the victory screen comes up. All right, here we are. Victory score 2,900. We have defeated the Union, and here we can see more of the details. We killed about 523. We suffered 485, so about even. Not too bad. Here's McClellan's army. And you can see, yeah, not too bad. They had about three, what's well, Reno? They, he had about 3,000 men. The Kanawha Division, there it is, under Cox's uh, division. Or, yeah, maybe I just misread that wrong. <laughs> yeah, so Jacob D. Cox. Yeah, so he had, okay, yeah, he was a brigade commander, I think. Yeah, and Cook, Crook? I missed her. I didn't see that time. But yeah, but Garland did really well. Not too bad. And then we had the artillery and stuff. But yeah, the 4th North Carolina and the 2nd North Carolina, they did not do anything. Completely useless. But thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next battlefield. Bye bye.